Hey, what's up students and really anybody who happens to watch this, it's Wednesday night and that means it's time for church. Uh, and so we're going to do church online tonight. I know it's going to be a little bit different, but I just want to challenge everybody to make sure that you just lean in tonight. And so Kurt's got an awesome word for everybody. Uh, so I want us to listen close to what he has to say, what God wants to say through him. So here's my challenge. Right now, I want everybody to hit pause and go grab a Bible and a notebook. Go. Seriously, if you haven't hit pause, pause and go get your Bible and notebook. Um, okay, now what we're going to do is I'm going to send it over to Kurt, and I want you guys to pay attention for the next seven to eight minutes what he says. Love you guys. Glad you're tuning in. The title for tonight's message is Set the Tone. All right, set the tone. I want everyone to say that on three with me, wherever you are. All right, ready? On three. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, that was so loud. I can't hear anything. Anyway, uh, we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 1, uh, 28 through 30. And uh, I want everyone to just have something to write with, whether it's your phone or your book. And here's the first test for that, okay? Our first pause. We're going to call them pauses. I want you to write two things that can distract you in the morning to not be with God, all right? Two things that distract you, all right? Ready? Go. I'm going to write with you, okay? Awesome. All right. Mine were my phone and my kids, okay? So my wife, Caroline, a couple years ago, uh, started using these things called essential oils. Now, I don't know too much about them, but what I do know is that you put them in this thing called a diffuser, which is mixed with water, and it shoots up this mist of the oil and the water mixed together. And so it kind of creates this smell in a room. And so what this has done over the past couple of years, either when I come home from work or go into another room, it helps set the tone for either what's happened that day or what's going to happen um, for that night or helps me to know what's been going on. For instance, if I walk into the room uh, from work, I open the front door and I smell the frankincense oil. You know, Caroline's put the frankincense oil in there. I know that it's been a stressful day because the frankincense oil is supposed to help calm you down. And so this helps me know coming in from my work day Either Caroline's had a stressful day at home or at work, or maybe the kids have had a stressful day. So this helps me to be a little more sensitive. And then there's also an oil called the thieves oil. And the thieves oil is used uh, when someone has been sick. So if I walk in the door and I smell the thieves oil, I know, oh, you know, someone's been sick today. And this has been pretty cool to help me to know and really for Caroline to set the tone for the house, um, you know, at any time of the day. We also see this in scripture. People can set the tone with their first words, with the first statement they say in a conversation. Take Jesus and the woman at the well. A woman comes up to the well that Jesus is at. She's a Samaritan woman. Uh, she's probably a little nervous about this man um, that's there and doesn't really know what to expect. But Jesus kind of calms the conversation with his first words. He says, do you want a drink? Can I offer you a drink? And so this woman doesn't know where the conversation's going, but her guard probably went down just a little bit because of those first words. Then think about the shepherds watching over their flock by night when Jesus was getting born. An angel appears. They're probably freaked out. And instead of the angel saying, hey, there's, the king's been born. You got to go. You got to go. The angel says, do not be afraid. And then goes on to deliver the news. And so tonight, I want us to look at, at one of these encounters in the book of Luke where an angel appears to Mary. But before we do that, let's take our second pause, and I want you to write down what you think the answer is to this question as it pertains to you. The question is this, how are you currently setting the tone each day? Okay, when you wake up, what would you say um, is true for you for how you set the tone for your um, day? Do you set it in a way that honors God, or does the world kind of get at you, all right? For instance, those two distractions, do you turn to those two things first, all right? Or do you give time to God um, initially every single day? So instead of trying to figure out what that answer is, think back over since school's been out. What would you say you do first? Do you give God time first or the world time first? Let's just take a moment. 
Right. That shouldn't that shouldn't have taken long to decide. So let, let's let me read here in Luke chapter one, verse twenty eight. Here here's what it says. Then the the angel went to her to Mary and said, "Greetings, all right, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you." Mary was greatly troubled at at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. So imagine being Mary. You're in your house. You're in your room. And an angel appears who has this great news and says, greetings, favored woman. And of course, Mary is freaking out a little bit. The Bible says she's deeply troubled. And instead of the angel saying, hey, you're going to give birth to the son of God. It's going to be great, but you got to go and do this. The angel says, Mary, do not be afraid and sets the tone for the conversation, for the news that's going to be delivered. And so let's take our third pause, and I want you to write down the answer to this question, what you think it is. What do your first words in a conversation communicate to the people listening? All right, why, why are your first words so important? All right, let's write down your, your thoughts. I'll give you about 25 seconds. All right, everyone finishing up? All right. So here's the challenge for tonight. I want you to look at your own life for yourself and how are you setting the tone each day? Because students, if you don't set the tone each day with God, the world is gonna set the tone for you, especially with the quarantine that we're in right now. So let me say that again. If you don't choose to set the tone with God each day, the world is going to set it for you. How is God going to be, how is a, uh, how are you going to set the tone for God with your attitude, with your perspective each day, with your actions, the way you choose to think? You know, I want you to think about others as well, because you're basically living with three avenues, okay? Instead of your teen going to the mall and all these things you usually get to do, you have three avenues, your family, your neighborhood, and your online life. That's basically what you have right now. And so to finish up, I want to challenge you with this. How are you choosing to set the tone for God in your family? Instead of, you know, if your mom asks you to do a chore and you shrug in your shoulders and you're like, ah, how can you wake up and say, I'm going to have a servant heart. How can I serve you today, mom? How can I help around the house? In your neighborhood, instead of waiting to be served or just sitting around, how can you maybe serve some people in your neighborhoods, leaving something on their doorstep, a note saying that you've prayed for them? And then finally, with your friends. You know, instead of feeding the frenzy of fear with your friends and conversations on the phone or texting, man, how can you be the one shepherding them back to worship, shepherding them back to um, scripture? And then really online, are you, is everything doom and gloom online, sharing articles that are really negative, or are you posting scripture, you know, posting songs that people can worship to? So let's take just a moment and write down the three avenues where you can choose um with your family, in your neighborhood, and your, uh, and your online life, how can you choose um, to set the tone for God in those areas? Let's just write those down quickly. All right, guys, uh, you're either going either gonna to be hopping on a Zoom with your life group, or if you're uh, unable to do that, go ahead, and if you feel comfortable, uh, go ahead and text your group chat that you have with your life group, your answers to that, and maybe that can spark some discussion in the days ahead. We love you guys, and we'll see you at 7 o'clock for family worship.